Step two, learn or try to understand your controlled process object. As an automation engineer, we can not only rely on the controller if you want to get a good performance on control. You must understand and understand the behavior of your controlled process object. From my personal experience, there are a couple items we need to take care. Firstly, you need to understand what the current operating point for your system. That means, for example, for the pressure system, water level, or temperature system, usually they will have an operating point. The process value will always work around this operating point. Take a furnace system as an example. For the furnace or for a boiler, maybe the temperature will work around 250 centigrade. That is a, that uh, operating point for this system. And second item, that is uh, the maximum or minimum of this uh, process value of your system. Especially when your actuator open 100 or closed to a zero, what the maximum or what the minimum value your process could be. Because sometimes, even if your actuator already opened 100%, but your process value still cannot reach that set point. Take a heater system as an example. Maybe you already regulate 100% on your heater energy, but the temperature still cannot reach that setting point, or the target temperature. So that means maybe the design has something wrong. It's not only the control issues. And third item, that is the transition time. You need to understand every time you change the actuator, how long your system will transit and how long you need to wait. Because working on site, sometimes the time is limited. You must understand or you must have a rough plan how long you could work on site. Maybe totally you could have a three hours, but every time the transition time may take one hour. That means you only have a three times to change the actuator and get the response and get the rough idea how the behavior of your system. And the fourth item, that is the delay time. That means every time you change the actuator and uh, basically how long you would wait and see the behavior got a change from your system. Usually this uh, delay time maybe have a couple minutes or maybe have a couple seconds. The system has a response according to your actuator changes. Other than the delay time, we also need to take care about the dead zone and uh, saturation of your process behavior. And the next item that is a uh, acceleration and the deceleration of your process value. Because sometimes if you open too much or decrease the actuator too much, so your process will change dramatically. Sometimes your process equipment, such as uh, the pipeline, tank, or the valve, cannot withstand this uh, changing. So maybe they totally damaged because of the, the dramatic change. You must uh, take care about this. The next item, that is uh, the disturbance of your system. You need to figure out what the main disturbance variables for your system? What the main problem cause your system got a disturbance? Because as a PID closed loop system is working target that is a set point, but actually is working against the disturbance. So it will cause the closed loop controller control performance. Also, it's the main issue for the process value stability. And the last but not the least, you need to understand after your test, what the process will be. For example, some system, they are testing the proxy or group system. And after the test, all the proxy and the group system are already solid and cannot be redo anymore. You must clean the process material and redo all the things and clean everything. It may take a couple days to redo everything. That means when you're doing this test, you maybe only have a one chance at one time. You basically doesn't have any second time to do the same thing. So you must have an old picture on your process. And also you have to estimate how much energy and how many materials could let you to do the test. So this is several items from my experience. I do believe there are a couple more items, but those items are the top 
level items you need to take care. And take my test system as an example. In my system, it's an operating point. Now, uh, the control signal is working around 25%, and the operating point temperature that is a 43 centigrade. And I just uh, decreased the speed of the fan and the temperature is going up. So that is a, a step response of this process system. And as I tested, the maximum temperature of this process that is a 60 centigrade and uh, the minimum temperature that is a uh, ambient temperature, basically that is a 20 centigrade. And every time after I change the control signal, basically I will wait three to five minutes waiting for the system go back to the stationary. And regarding the disturbance, I can blow some cool air or hot air to this uh, small area and uh, make some disturbance uh, temperature to this uh, system. So that is the uh, over picture on my test system. So from this over picture, we can see basically after several times the step response, we could have a over picture on the behavior of your process. And we can figure out what the delay time, what the transition time, what the maximum minimum temperature or value from your process. And from the time response serial wheel, so basically this system give us a, a periodic second order system behavior. All right, let's do a wrap up. In the second step, we need to learn the controlled process object. So to understand your process object, you could give a different step response and get the behavior of your process object. And keep in mind, to implement a good performance control system, you must understand your process at first. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumb up. If you like to watch more videos in my channel, please subscribe. See you in next video.